We continue now at the top of Daf Pei Amad Aleph and Maseches Erevin. This is Erevin Daf 80a. The Gemara here is in the middle of enumerating things which the Sabe de Pumbedisa agree with. And now it's in the middle of a statement of Rav. Rav, Rav wants to know how do you, ident- how do you identify an Asherah tree? So he says that if the, uh, if the priests of the Avodah Zarah, they protect that tree, but they don't taste from its fruits. Rashi says, Obviously they worship it, otherwise they wouldn't separate. So that's how Rav says you can identify an Asherah tree. And then Shmuel says to that, An example of that would be, let's say they say these particular dates are for the beer that's used for Bey Nitzrafi, which was the name of a particular Avodah Zarah, and they dr- they used to drink that beer on their holidays. That would be an example where you know it's an Asher tree. The Amru Li Sabi de Pumbedisa and uh, Amemar says that the uh, the Sabi de Pumbedisa said to me, de Shmuel, that the halacha is like Shmuel. Um, so again, this was another statement that the Sabe de Pumbedisa had made. And now the Gemara returns to its discussion of how you make a Shetufe Mavos. Now again, the Mishnah had said that you need to lift the uh, the food off the ground, the Tefach. So now the Gemara says, Meisve, we have a question from the following Brisa. Ketzad Mishtatzfin B'mavoi, how do you make a Shetufe Mavos? Meviyim Chavis Shal Yayin, Vishal Shemen, Vishal Tamarim, Vishal Grogros, Vishal Sharmin, Eperos. You bring barrels of some kind of a wine or oil or dates or dried figs or other kinds of fruits. In Mishalo, if it's his own uh, food, it's Arach Lezakos, then he has to do Zechia again. He gives it to somebody else who... Who is who is Zoha in it on behalf of all the other residents of the Mavoy, via Mishalahan, and if it already belongs to them, Sarah Lodia, he needs to make it known that he's using it for an Arif, Umagbiya Minakarka Mashu, and he picks it up from the ground just a little bit. So that seems to go against our Mishnah, which says he has to bring it uh, off the ground a tefach. So the Gemara answers, My Mashu Nami the Kamar Tefach. What does the word mashu over here mean? It means a tefach, it's the same thing. It's my way of the following Machlokas Amoroim. Shitufe Mavos, when it comes to Shitufe Mavos, Rav Amar ain't Sarach Lezakos. Rav says there is no need to do Zechia. Shmuel Amar Sarach Lezakos. Shmuel says you do need to do Zechia. Now Shmuel uh, seems to be consistent with our Mishnah. The Mishnah on the previous one which says you need to do Zechia. Eruve Techumen. Now when it comes to Eruve Techumen, Rav Amar Sarach Lezakos. Rav says you need to do Zechia. Shmuel Amar ain't Sarach Lezakos. Shmuel says you don't need to do Zechia. So Gemara says, Bishlam mila Shmuel hacha tanan v'hacha lo tanan. I understand Shmuel's position. When it comes to uh, Shitufi Mavos, we have a Mishnah like Shmuel. When it comes to Eruvi Tuchumin, there is no Mishnah. So Shmuel assumes there's no requirement. El the Rav, my time. But according to Rav, what reason does Rav have? On the contrary, our Mishnah goes against what Rav says. So the Gemara says, Tanoi, it's actually Machlokas Tanoim. Dama Rav Yehuda, I'm a Rav, because Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav. There was a story with the daughter-in-law of Ravoshia. She went to the to the bathhouse. The chashchola became dark. So her mother-in-law made her an eruv uh, in order that she should be able to travel back. Rashi understands that what we're talking about over here is an eruv tchum. And this story came uh, in front of Ravichia. The Asar, and he said it's prohibited. He said that eruv tchum is no good. Amar lo Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yosi. So Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yosi said to him, Bavloi, he said Babylonian. What are you being so strict for when it comes to Ilchas Erevin? So said Abba. Call Sheyesh Lach Lahakel Beirevin. Any time you have a situation where you could be makel when it comes to the halachas of Erevin, Hakel, you should be lenient. So I don't understand why you didn't allow this Erev. Vibaylu, and then they asked on that story, what was the issue? Why is it that it may have been bad? Michel Chamosa Irvula was the situation that the mother-in-law's uh, own food was used for the Erev of Mishum Delo Zichzalah, and the problem was there was no Zichia. Or maybe the issue was that that, that wasn't the issue. It was her own food, so it wasn't an issue of Zechiah. The real issue was it was done without her knowledge. Maybe you can't make the air of Tchumen without the person's knowledge. So the conclusion of the story was, So one of the particular rabbis named Rav Yaakov said as follows, the following answer, To me it was explained in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. The case was, Mishal Chamosa Irva was from the mother-in-law, because there was no Zechia. And so therefore here you see an opinion that uh, that you do need Zechia when it comes to Erev Tchumen. And again, that was what Rav said. Erev Tchumen, Rav Amar Tzarech Liskos, Rav says, that uh, you have to do Zechia. Rashi over here says, Rabbi Chia koi kerav b'tchumen. Rabbi Chia is following Rav by tchumen. Now what does Rav do by chatzeros? Begabe chatzeros, time with Rav, mishum dekevon dekaoser aleo, gomeru makni vein tzarech zechia. Rav, Rav just holds, since you're prohibiting, uh, if you don't join this Erev, there's going to be a prohibition. So we assume that you're going to be makna with your full uh, full intention. You don't need to do zechia. V'yav agav demasnis and pligal ed Rav. Now, even though our Mishnah seems to argue on Rav, Rav tano upolig. Rashi understands that Rav is a tana, and he argues. 
And so uh, that essentially is the answer. And Tosa says, uh, Tosa disputes uh, Rashi in his approach over here because Tosa says, wasn't the whole main question from the Mishnah. And now your main answer is, Rav Tanahu Polig. That's not even really uh, in the Gemara. Those words aren't in the Gemara. So so, uh, so Tosa has a different explanation of the Gemara. But in any case, the Gemara con- uh, continues. Amr le Rabbi Zeira le Rabbi Yaakov, Bred de Bas Yaakov, Rabbi Zeira said to Rabbi Yaakov, the son of the daughter of Yaakov, Kimot is Hasam. He said, when you go over there, when you go to Eretz Yisrael, Akif Vizil le Sulma de Tzur, I want you to take a roundabout way by the Sulma de Tzur, the ladder of Tzur. Again, this seemed to be like a mountain with stairs, a large area of stairs. Uboy mi name Rabbi Yaakov Baridi. And I want you to ask Rabbi Yaakov Baridi the following question. Uh, what was the, what was the story? Going back to the story before, was the, the, the mother-in-law's food that was used for the Erev, and the problem was the problem of Zechiah. Maybe the issue was it was her own food, but the issue was it wasn't uh, with her knowledge. And Amar Leh, he gave him the same answer. Michel Chamosa Irvola, the situation was the mother-in-law used her own food. When Mishim Delo Zichzalan, it's because there was no Zechia. And the Gemara now continues. Amar of Nachman, of Nachman says, Naktina, and we hold, Echad Eruve Techumen, Viachad Eruve Chatseros, Vechad Shituve Mavos. Doesn't matter if it's Eruve Techumen, Eruve Chatseros, Shituve Mavos, Sarach Liskos, you do need Zechia. Boy of Nachman, of Nachman asked the following question, Eruve Tavshilan. Tzarech Lizkos, Oen Tzarech Lizkos. When you make an Erev Tavshilin, which allows you to prepare from Yontif to Shabbos, so in such a situation, do you need Zechia or do you not need Zechia? Amar of Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Umayti boile. What kind of question is this? Lo Shmiel Lehod, Amar of Nachman Bar Avad, Amar Shmuel, didn't he hear the statement from Rav Nachman Bar Avad in the name of Shmuel, Eruve Tavshilin, Tzarech Lizkos, that you do need Zechia? What's he asking the question for? Amar le Abayas, so Abayas said back to Rav Yosef, Pshita de lo Shmiel. Well, it's obvious Rav Nachman did not hear that statement. Di Shmiel le Mighty Boy If you heard the statement, what's his question? Amar le, so Rav Yosef said back to Abayas, Ato Eruve Techum and Milo Amar Shmuel ain't Sarach Liskos. What are you talking about? By Eruve Techum and Shmuel said you don't need Zechia. Vi Amar you, it's Sarach Liskos. And Rav Nachman argues with Shmuel and says that you do need Zechia. So you see that it's not clear that he's always going to follow Shmuel. So maybe over here also, who says he follows Shmuel? So Abaya responded, Hachi Ashna, what kind of comparison is that? Bishlam Hasam Pligi Ravu Shmuel. Over there, it's a machlokus between Rav and Shmuel. The Kamash Malon Kichumran Damar, Vichumran Damar. So Rav Nachman is saying who he holds, like he says, he follows the strict opinion. So in that particular case where Shmuel is lenient, he says, No, I'm strict, I'm always strict in these cases. Aval Hacha, but over here by Yeruve Tavshilin, Isa de Shmuel, if he heard the statement, me could demand the public. There's no one that argues with the statement. So it would have been obvious. If he had heard the statement, there would be no other uh, opinion to rely on. There was a, a superintendent who lived in the neighborhood of Rabbi Zeira. Rashi over here explained, Torzina, it's a, It was a non-Jew who was appointed to guard the weapons. He lived in the city, and there were particular weapons that were made for defense of the city, and that was his task. He was, uh, he was in charge of defending that area. So in any case, this particular Torzina, he lived in the neighborhood of, uh, of Rabbi Zeir Amar Le Ogerl on Rishusach. So since he lived in the neighborhood, they needed his permission. They needed to rent out his Rishus from him in order to make an Erev. So they said to him, can you rent out your Rishus? Lo Ogerl, he wouldn't do it. Asu l'kami de Rabbi Zeir. So now they came to Rabbi Zeir Amar Le, and they said to him, Ma'u l'megar midavisu. They asked Rabbi Zeir the following question, can we rent out the Rishus from, from his wife? Amar Lu, so he said to them, Hachi Amar Reish Lakish, Mishmei de Gavra Rabu, Mani Rabbi Chanina, so says Reish Lakish in the name of a great individual, and who is it? It's Rabbi Chanina, said as follows, Ishto Shaladam Ha'areve Shalom Hidaito. You can use a person's wife, even if uh, he doesn't know that it's happening, she can make the Erev on his behalf without his knowledge. Another story like this, Ahu Torzina, Dehava B'Shivuse, De Rabbi Yehuda Bar there was again a Torzina in the neighborhood of Rabbi Yehuda Bar Amri Leh, they said to him, Ogerl on Rishusach, rent out your Rishus to us, Lo Ogerl, he didn't do it, Asu Lakami De Rabbi Yehuda Bar they came in front of Rabbi Yehuda Bar Amri Leh, they said to him, Ma'u Lamegar Midivisu, can we rent it from his wife, Lo Hava Biyari, he didn't know the answer, Asu Lakami De Rav Masna, they came to Rav Masna, Lo Hava Biyari, he didn't know the answer either. Asu l'kami de Rav Yehuda came before Rav Yehuda. Amar Lui said to them, "Hachi Amar Shmuel." So says Shmuel, "Ishto shaladam areve shalomi daito." A wife of an individual, a person could make an erev without his knowledge. Meisrei they ask a question from the following: "Brayz and Noshim sheirvu v'nishtatfu shalomi das ba'lein ein eruv an eruv ein shituf an shituf." Brayz seems to say pretty explicitly: if a wife makes an erev or a shituf im avos without the knowledge of their husbands, the erev and the shituf are no good. So it's a direct contradiction to what we just said. So the Gemara says, Lokash is not difficult. Hada asar, hada lo asar. It depends if, if they're in a situation where it's causing a prohibition 
or in a situation where it's not causing a prohibition. Rashi says, If it's causing a prohibition to the people in the Mavo, you don't need his knowledge. But in the case where we said that you you have to do it, the wife can't do it without his knowledge, that's talking about a situation where there's no prohibition caused. For example, you have a chatzar, and it's actually between two different mavois. That chatzar usually joins the other mavoi, not this mavoi. It doesn't really cause a prohibition. So in that case, you cannot make a... Uh, you can't make an Erev without their knowledge. Hachinam Mistaver, the Gemara says this makes sense as well. Because if you didn't give an answer like this, if you didn't say there are distinctions between when you need the person's permission and when you don't need the person's permission, permission, you'd actually have a contradiction in Shmuel. Because over here, Shmuel just said before that a person's wife is allowed to make the Erev without his knowledge. But here, Shmuel says, Damar Shmuel, in the following statement, Shmuel says as follows. If you have somebody from a Mavoi who normally joins a Shittuf and he doesn't this particular time, People of the Mavoi can enter his house and they can take the Shittuf against his will. Now, in this case, Ragil in, Shein Ragil lo, it's only being allowed because he regularly joins. Apparently, Shmuel here says there is a limitation. You can't always make a shittuf without a person's knowledge. Shema no, you see that Shmuel indeed does make these kind of distinctions. It's not a blanket rule that you're allowed to make a shittuf for an Erev without the person's knowledge. Lema Messiah, let's bring a proof to this. Kofin so lasos lechi v'kora lemavu. It says we can force a person to make a lechi and a kora for a mavu. So here also you see that you're allowed to force a person to join an Erev even without his knowledge. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Pei Amid Beis.